What's up y'all? Got a video I'm very excited about today. We have the new Generation 7 Madone SLR. And I tore it all the way down to the frame because I wanted to, um, well, I'll explain that in a second, but I wanted to show like the full build process on this one. It's, uh, it's a cool bike. And the last one we got in the mail, it came in the box pretty much completely assembled, which is um, kind of boring to watch. So this year Trek and uh, my back order with them is kind of set in stone. Um, I can cancel stuff if I want to, but there is a penalty associated with that now. And so instead of taking the penalty, I thought, well, you know, we have the ability to make a video and use it as advertising. And um, this bike started its life as a SLR7 Force ETAP. Here's all, here's all the original parts from that, and we'll be selling those parts here shortly. Um, I think I actually already might have a buyer for them. But anyway, it is now going to become a custom, close to SLR9 red build. Luckily, the stock handlebar it comes with is the right size for me. Gonna do some other minor upgrading. Got a set of uh, Aeolus RSL 51 wheels, and um, I just think Bontrager makes some of the best wheels on the market. Love the gloss finish on these things. Um, I set them up already just because um, I think that's the most boring part of the video is setting the wheels up. So let me know if I'm wrong about that though. Pirelli P0 with the yellow logos. Um, I thought it kind of looked really cool. And um, I've been really interested in um, doing Pirelli tires this season. I'm gonna use them on all my bikes for this year. And so I, I figured why not also put it on this road bike. Here's the fork. It's this cool gloss to matte finish. And it, it, um, if you've worked on a Trek road bike before, or even a checkpoint at this point, you're used to this. Got the cable housing running straight into the fork there. Here's the headset. This is the split ring and the preload for the top bearing. You can see the brake cable runs in through the middle there. And then rear brake cable runs either, I think it's this side. I'll have to remember it here shortly, but. And then this is the uh, top cap that integrates with the stem. It all just kind of clicks together. Not perfect light right now because there's no fork in it, but you can kind of get an idea of how this all goes together. Whoop, whoops. To build this bike, I'm gonna be routing cables from the back and from the fork up through the headset first. That's gonna make it the easiest to route. So there's a hole right there. Whenever I'm looking at like a integrated cockpit thing like this, you look at like, okay, which hole is gonna be easier to get the hose out of? I think those holes give you more room to grab it with a pick than that does. So I'll be routing it again, back of the bike to the top or bottom of the bike to the top and through this. All right, gonna route the hose through the little rubber piece here. And it's gonna go, obviously, into the bottom bracket here. One thing to note here, um, do you see this like weird thing here? Well, actually, it's removable and that's really nice if you need to like work on your um, DI2 stuff. Oh, wait one second. Don't, I, I'm not a big fan of these things. Um, I like it when my bikes are really loud and annoying, so I usually don't have these in my bike, so I'm glad I found that. Anyway, um, we're gonna push this through all the way. But yeah, that, that bottom hole is so you can access your DI2. Um, we're gonna be using ETAP because it is easier to live with. And I am a big SRAM fanboy, so no, uh, nothing against Shimano other than it's hard to get their product. Or it was, it's getting easier. So yeah, they've gotten a lot better recently. I'm like, I'm like accidentally rerouting it back into the... <laughs> All right, I was able to conquer that. You can see my brake caliper dangling back there. We'll uh, bolt that onto the frame so it stops dangling and then um, keep going with our routing. Next we'll do the fork. So um, then we can hopefully get the cockpit all in place and then um, the rest of the bike builds pretty easy from there. So Okay, so then next I got the front brake attached to the fork, routed through it and to there. You do not have to fish for that. It's just a tube. Um, there's nothing you can do to make it wrong. So. Um, all I do is shove it through the hole and it'll come out the other hole. No stress in here. This is actually a really intelligently designed bike. Um, I think for an aero bike, normally those kind of scary and complicated. This one's just kind of normal. It's light. My friend who has one is uh, really stoked on the way it rides. So I'm excited to try it out. 
Cool, so I got the cables routed. So this is the rear brake. This is the front brake, and you can see they have their slots that they go in. Um, next, we will put the stack on and then try to try to see how hard it is to get through the handlebar. I, I, I hope it's not too hard. I, I don't think it's gonna be too hard. This is the headset spacer. It is a puzzle piece design. It comes apart like that. For the way we're building it though, you don't really need to take them apart, so I'm gonna put it back together. Oops. Yeah, so because of the way we're building this bike, we're just gonna slide it all on. Starting with this piece, this is a required top spacer. Gonna go and grab some cables with it. And uh, you can see it's notched, so it's gonna fit. Oops. All right, so one thing I wanna point out is that the rear hose goes slammed up forward against the front of that spacer kind of where it's sitting now and then the front hose sits where it is currently sitting and it will all go together so i was kind of fighting it before and there we go so now i got it all all correct there and we'll put the rest of the stack on and then try to get it through the handlebar we can always puzzle piece this on later let's try to get the cables through the handlebar because I think that's going to be the harder thing to do. Well, that I spoke too soon. That was extremely easy to get that first one through. Um, just kind of shoved it in and then uh, used my pick right there to catch it as it came through. So, so far, so far, so good. Super easy. All right. So not gonna lie, the second hose was really hard and I still haven't gotten it, but I just wanted to show everybody how I did it. This uh, magnet piece, I pulled this one end through. Gonna attach the blue end to the end of the hydro hose, and then um, I'll be able to fish it through without it fighting me. I think the uh, the two having two hoses there and at once makes it to where the the hose isn't as easy to route. So not a big deal though. Just pull out the cable router tool and we'll get it through here in a second. Man, that I'm not gonna lie. So the second hose, this one took a lot of effort to get through. I had to um, use the blue tool thing and then I kind of broke the blue tool thing. I don't think it's permanently broken. I just need to reattach this rubber piece, but it's all done now. And uh, as you can see, the hoses are ran. Got them both coming out the handlebar there. And so now we just got to attach them to the brakes. Probably the hardest part of the build is completely out of the way now. So that's great news. One piece we haven't addressed yet is the uh, aero top cap thing. Um, this is the one with the preload hole on the top. You do have to install this before putting the handlebar down. It slots in like that. And then the steer tube goes up into it. It does act as about a five mil spacer here. So um, I'm hoping, I'm pretty sure we're not gonna have to cut the steer tube um, to get the desired stack height on here. It then slots into the spacers from the top down. Trek makes one that is um, totally flat. And the way it works is you do the headset preload um, and then you take it off and then you just reinstall the flat one. Um, I ordered one of those. So um, maybe I'll do like a little reel or a update on how to install that. But as of right now, the uh, steer tube does not need to be cut. Um, one other thing I wanted to address and um, it's wanting to pull towards the drive side really hard. So the way to fix that is it's just got too much tension in the cable through there which I probably could have told you because of how crazy of a install that was. It was really hard to get this side through specifically. This side took me 30 seconds. This side took me about 20 minutes. So what I'm going to do is disconnect the brake and just pull some slack out of it. <laughs> I meant to say put some slack back into it, not pull slack out of it. Um, now you can see it's sitting uh, straight and it... There we go. It still wants to pull that direction, but... I don't know what you would do about that other than just let it break in. There's tons of slack in the hose, so hopefully that doesn't cause a longer term issue. I uh, I will have to, I mean, it doesn't really bother me, so, um, but it's already, it's already gotten better. Okay, cool. Anyway, let me shut up about that for a second. You can see now we have access to put the, uh, just top cap, whatever top cap you want, and should be able to button up this cockpit um, hose wise. Um, one thing to note about this bike is it is electronic only, so no uh, no option for anything other than uh, uh, electronic drivetrains. Got it torqued, and then check the preload. 
no play in the headset. Okay, cool. One thing with this bike that I haven't seen anybody really talk about, um, at least on the internet yet, is it's got the same exact geometry as the current model year Trek Amanda. I think that's genius from Trek because now I, I so I'm, I've uh, not recently, but I spent a year and a half riding that Amanda SLR and really enjoyed it. Well, hey, let me just hop on this Madone. I know exactly what my stack height should be and all of that. And I, I got a bike fit on that Amanda, so it's really convenient for me to like not have to redo the entire thing. Um, just simple, no thoughts. I mean, I did consult a bike fitter about it just to double check, but it was, it, it turned out to be um, very easy to sort out. So if you are looking for this bike and you're familiar with the geometry of the Trek Amanda, well, it's the same. So, um, and it worked for me. So I thought that geometry was great. So excited that Trek simplify. I like it when brands make things simple for con consumers. It's like, hey, do you want the lighter one or the the arrow one? They're the same bike fit. Done. Easy. Makes the decision to what bike works for you better. Um, a lot easier, I think. I'm kind of done wrestling with cables for a bit. Um, I'm just going to let that sit because it honestly was annoying. So I'm going to install the bottom bracket, which is not hard to do. And now that the... I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, now that that hose is ran through the frame, I can uh, install this with no consequences. So let's get to it. Looks like it already had grease on it, but we're gonna add more just because I didn't look before I grabbed the brush and I was already filming. And since we're already here, might as well just add more grease because it doesn't really hurt anything. I got a BB Infinite. What do I got here? BB Infinite. Dub T47 internal bearing. Um, this is a steel bearing bottom bracket. Um, I don't really think you need anything better than this. This thing is amazing and I've used them in a ton of bikes now. I'll um, be sure to show everybody the spin test here in a second. The reason these are so good is because it's just one tube and you insert it into the frame and then this piece um, catches it on the other side. So the no matter what, the crank is perfectly aligned. So. Go ahead and start off by just throwing that through. The ho you, you see I just hit the hose, right? So we'll put the hose above it and uh, get it threaded on. Get started at least if I can. Well, <laughs> it didn't go as well as I thought. Let me get a tool. Get it going. Yep, all right, so it's working now. Get that tightened on. And then one trick I always do is, so you can see it's coming in the other side. Um, I always like putting the second half of it on before it finishes so that that way it's easier to put this side on. And I might actually even need to back the other side out a little bit, but uh, hopefully not. Let's see how we do. Usually they catch each other and kind of thread together together, which is cool. But let's see what happens here. Yeah, you can see me spinning this side is also spinning that side. So that's exactly what we want to be seeing right now. That side will bow them out and then we'll have to just double check the tightness on it. But um, get this one in all the way. One second, I'm going to set the phone down. All right, and then we got the spacers and the everything that goes with it. Um, these are the bearing dust shields and then these other big black ones are um, the uh, spindle spacers and BB Infinite sends them out to be perfectly matched up with whatever crank you have so you don't have to really mess with it. This one goes on the, I got too many things in my hands. This one goes on the, dr the non-drive and then the other half goes in the drive. And you can see that one's uh, 4.3. <laughs> there we go. Just a really well thought out product. I, I really f love BB Infinite and uh, we'll continue to showcase them on the channel. One of my signature things that I love talking about is um, King Creek makes um, a aluminum preload collar and it's just so much better than these ones. I mean, these ones work just fine, but um, I'm gonna be installing this on the spindle and um, you do uh, super glue it on, so. Grab my super glue. So I usually just uh, apply a layer around the edge of the spindle, stick that on there. Um, never ever had a problem with this. I've been running these for at least two or three years now and just excellent preload on your 
bearings with this system. I'm gonna give the glue a second to dry. And while I'm doing that, I'm gonna talk about something that is um, a little bit new for me. And if you're somebody who knows me, this is gonna come as a surprise, but this is a two by crank setup. And um, yeah, I, uh, I haven't had a front derailleur on a bike that was um, one of mine in um, over six years. I have been running one by exclusively in that time, and this will be the first time I'm running a two by. I was convinced by my buddy Trey, who is a road racer, that I should really put a two by on this bike, and I can always switch it to a one by if I want. I felt like with this Trek Madone, it was a good one to kind of be more traditional. Um, I have a 5037. That was, uh, again, Trey, a uh, Trey recommendation for me there. He, I'm leaning on him a lot on this build. Cause honestly, this whole thing is a little like new for me. Aero road bike. I got a handlebar that's going to be narrow. I'm not used to that. For reference, I run a 44 on all my bikes and this is going to be a 39 at the hoods and a 42 at the drops. Um, so yeah, we're going to be doing a lot of new stuff on this and I'll, I'll definitely be doing a follow-up video on this bike. I'm so excited to ride this and uh, kind of just go fast, um, obviously. <laughs> Got it all installed. It feels pretty freaking amazing. And I put extra grease in there too. So you're seeing this with like additional grease. Uh, I, I showed it in the video. Um, but yeah, here you go. <laughs> That's awesome. I don't know if you could ever really ask more than that. I don't know why you'd want more than that or if you would need more than that, but it seems pretty legit to me. So yeah, BB Infinite, check them out. I I, uh, I love those, their product. And uh, I mean, what what more could you want? All right, so I got the rear derailleur, <laughs> the rear derailleur bolted on. And now we're gonna come to something that I'm not really used to messing with um, on my own stuff. Um, the front derailleur. It has a tool pre-installed in it, if you can see that. And you need to put it on without a chain, it on the big ring, have it lined up in there, and then tighten it down. And that should be as good as it's gonna be. Um, I've not heard tons of positive things about SRAM's front derailleur. Um, some people don't complain about it. Some people have tons of complaints. I'm sure more people have more complaints than not. SRAM is kind of the king of one by, in my opinion, and um, I still think Shimano's two by probably is a little bit better. And um, that's okay though, I don't, I, for me, it doesn't matter. And then this thing just pops back out. And we should have good alignment there. Um, it looks good to me. Hopefully it is good. Um, we won't know until we put the chain on it, which we'll do here in a little bit. I'm, uh, I should probably bleed the brakes before I put the chain and stuff on. So I'll do that first. All right, so I'm working on installing the levers now. Just quick reminder to make sure you keep a finger on the hose there so you don't drop the nut back into the handlebar. That would be really annoying to get back out. So I just try to keep it all kind of like held in place while I'm screwing the barb and a uh, crush washer in. I uh, got the brakes connected. That was weird. Anyway, um, so yeah, we're almost finished up now. Somehow, even after all that cable routing, um, the brakes work. I mean, realistically, like maybe that, the front one's a little bit worse than the rear, but super surprised by that, that that even works at all because we lost a lot of fluid trying to throw that through the handlebar. And I wanted to take a second to talk about the seat post. So, um, it's pretty well thought out and um, most of the time seat posts are just seat posts, but this one I really like. It has fore and aft adjustment here, tilt adjustment there, and then um, two different ways to adjust it um, for the height. And it works with this um, piece that can be flipped from the low. So if you uh, want to slam it in the frame, you want the bolt at top. But yeah, it gives you a lot of adjustability options and. I just think that this is a really well-designed seat post. Really like the two separate adjustments. I don't like it when they're on the same. Honestly, the Shrek Amanda like seat mask kind of sucks compared to this. So hopefully they update it and make it more like this because this works. I got a uh, Aeolus RSL saddle to go with this bike, um, carbon saddle. Just really like the shape of this. It's um, Trek short nose kind of, uh, they call it a race saddle, but I, I think it's for everybody. I, I, I sell the saddle to everybody and everybody seems to like it. So just a short nose kind of solid saddle. This is obviously the nicest trim level but you know what I mean. Ended up weighing like 17 and a half pounds. I think they did a good job of taking a complicated bike. I know everybody liked the last Madone, but taking kind of a complicated bike, keeping what made that bike cool a little bit, 
but simplifying it, um, this new, whatever you would call that, <laughs> isoflow is what it's actually called, um, does flex. So hopefully it's not too uncomfortable. Um, so uh, other people who have ridden this bike already have told me that it's a very comfortable road bike for being an aero bike. If you guys want a Madone, let me know. We, uh, we can get you one. You can contact us through all the links and everything that we have down below.